Britney Spears has officially entered the Diddy chat. Listen, girl, we have such a jam-packed video. We need to talk about Britney's shady management having a strong connection with Diddy, plus Diddy allegedly having something to do with the 2007 Gimme More performance. That's right, that performance, girl. But before we get into all of that, let me introduce myself. My name is Sebastian. I spill pop culture tea videos every single day. So if you're looking for a new messy best friend, honey, you have found me. So why don't you grab a snack and a drink, hit that subscribe button because, girl, we have a jam-packed video. So let's start with Lou Taylor, Britney Spears' management. There is a new article connecting Britney Spears and Diddy via their uh, or her prior management team, uh, Lou Taylor. So we're going to read this article together. It is um, by, let me tell you something, by the Daily Mail. So of course, you know, just to protect myself, I'm going to say this is all alleged, but this is what the article says. So it says, Britney Spears' surprising connection to Diddy Saga con uh, revealed. Okay, so let's read this together, girl, because when I tell you I'm not shocked, <laughs> I'm not shocked, girl, okay? So it says here, TriStar Sports and Entertainment Group, the celebrity management firm that previously came under fire for its alleged involvement in Britney Spears' conservatorship battle. What they don't know about Jamie and Lynn Spears is that every day Jamie goes to work as a professional chef, asking the Lord to give him the strength to honor the people he works for in the midst of circumstances. That Lynn Spears is a mother that is brokenhearted just because she's apart from her daughter, that she loves her daughter so much, and again, asking every day for God to give her strength and for her to continue to have hope. I mean, I, I'm so disturbed, Meredith, where we've gotten to be as a people, the morbidity of us watching the depravity of people suffering than to rally around and be hopeful. So really for, I guess for me to be self-indulgent for a moment, that I would really hope that all those who seek God for strength in their life would be interceding for this family because Jamie Spears, Lynn Spears, Brian, and Jamie Lynn Spears are all amazing people has a connection to the Sean Diddy Combs saga. Um, it says here, Taylor, okay, so Taylor, um, Lou Taylor, right? You guys obviously have heard that name before. Um, Lou Taylor is the company's founder, president and CEO, is none other than Spears' former business manager, who was accused of playing a key role in the conservatorship's implementation in 2008. Taylor also managed Combs, who she proudly confirmed was among her A-list clientele a, in a 2019 interview. Taylor revealed that her working relationship with Combs dates back to the early 1990s. It's unclear whether or not Combs is still being represented by TriStar. Spears has also previously called out TriStar Services director Robin Greenhill, who was recently mentioned in a civil rights and civil lawsuit uh, in a civil lawsuit against Diddy by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones? Um, a bombshell 2021 report by the New York Times claimed that Greenhill was in control of Britney Spears' credit cards, medications, and that TriStar had allegedly used Spears' own money to hire a security uh, team to surveil her during her conservatorship. Spears referred to Greenhill as Taylor's weird ass lackey in her 2023 memoir and accused the pair along with her own father, Jamie Spears, of bullying her. It was also previously reported by the Los Angeles Times that Spears' legal team was investigating the alleged um, 18 million that TriStar obtained from her estate over the span of the conservatorship which was terminated by a judge in November 2021, after 13 years. TriStar, Taylor, and Greenhill have all denied the allegations and have insisted that Spears' conservatorship was put forth by recommendation of legal counsel, not TriStar, and approved by the court for more than 12 years. Greenhill's name was, was back in the press this year after Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a 30 million lawsuit against Diddy, who he accused of groping and possibly drug-inducing R. 
the suit uh the the suit was filed just weeks before two of combs homes were raided by federal agents amid a uh, sex trafficking probe and mounting sa lawsuits in the court filings jones claimed he was ordered to recruit uh prostitutes <laughs> and have uh, SEX with them for the star's pleasure, and has hundreds of hours of video documenting Combs' serious illegal activity. He then accused Greenhill of being one of several individuals who helped make Diddy's alleged misconduct possible. Robin Greenhill, the accountant who would uh, ensure the wiring, funds transfer, or cash payments to uh, S workers, he claimed in the court filing. Combs denied all allegations of wrongdoing and filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit in August, calling it salacious and an attempt to exploit the star for money. Weeks later, Combs was arrested on S trafficking charges and is currently awaiting trial at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center in New York City. TriStar was, named, was not named in the disgraced rapper's seven, September 17 indictment. Uh, Combs um, has obviously, you know, he's awaiting on trial, but he, he basically, his attorney Mark Anifilo sat down with TMZ and uh, broke the news that Diddy will in fact take the stand and he cannot wait to defend himself and all the allegations that have been thrown his way. So that is a connection between Lou Taylor, TriStar, Britney and Diddy, but it does not stop there because now there is a new, well not new, but there's old reports coming out from the night before the Gimme More uh, performance. Um, it, there's pictures of Britney Spears partying with Diddy the night before. So I'm an, I found the actual, the People Magazine uh, uh, article about that night. And not only that, best friend, but in her book, Britney Spears talks about feeling dizzy the day of the performance. And people are now putting that and making a connection to... Um, to what's his name to Diddy. So let's let's go ahead and uh, let's just read this article. So it says here, best friend, that so <clears throat> the People Magazine article says showing no pre-show jitters before her big MTV Video Music Awards performance, Britney Spears made at least two club stops filled with dancing and champagne on Friday night. First hanging with Chris Angel, they were allegedly dating around that time. Then hitting a party thrown by dun 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 Diddy. So I I I I, I kind of remember this time. I just remember there was so much talk about Britney's big comeback. There were talks about this huge magical show that Chris Angel was allegedly uh putting on for her. Very like you know music and 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 magic and just like. Such it was. It sounded like such a huge production. I really don't know really what happened out about that. But anyways, says at Body English in the Hard Rock Hotel, the pop star and her pals, who had a VIP table surrounded with five dozen roses, were joined by the illusionist with whom she's been rehearsing. She wouldn't stop dancing with her friends, and she looked great. An onlooker said after about an hour, Spears left hand in hand with Angel. So yeah. They were allegedly dating. Um, I I I I, I kind of remember this time. People were just so excited. You know, this was the the time of the you know the breakdown. So people were just really happy that she was coming back. You know, to to herself. Um, after she left with Chris Angel, she popped up at Pure Nightclub where she received a warm welcome from Diddy. Quote, he says, listen up, we have Miss Britney Spears in the crowd, Diddy announced from the main stage at about 2 a.m. Saturday. Spears had slipped into the club through a side door with six girlfriends wearing a strapless black mini. She held court in the VIP area, smiling, sipping champagne and dancing barefoot on a couch. At one point, Diddy got on the microphone and told the crowd, Quote, Brittany, she holds her head up high. She show, shows some respect. Spears ducked her head down shyly, but bounced back when her new single, Gimme More, blared over the speakers. Her friends jumped in front of her and started dancing. Um, like I said, I mean, this was like her long-awaited comeback. You know, her last time she was on stage was... Uh, 
when in the zone came out you know her toxic era and she just given birth to her two babies she she just got a divorce from Kevin Federline she was all over the headlines it was like nonstop Britney mania but you know not for the best reasons um it says here that the singer left around 2 30 a.m smiling and waving to the crowd as she walked through a path cleared by security guards and headed to Norbar in the Luxor. So in Britney Spears' book, she does talk about feeling dizzy. Now, because obviously she partied to 2 a.m. Uh, and it was a Diddy party, people of course are saying, did something happen to Britney? So let's read uh, Britney's um, Give Me More performance, uh, what she had to say about it. So it says here, um, her album, Blackout, uh, it says, Blackout, uh, the thing I'm most proud in my whole career. So Blackout is a, her, her album where, uh, she has songs, uh, Gimme More, Peace of Me, Break the Eyes. Um, I mean, so many iconic songs from Blackout. I, Blackout is one of the greatest, like, pop albums in the world. So if you guys have not listened to Blackout, please make sure to go ahead and do it. So it says, Blackout, the thing I'm most proud in my whole career, came out right around Halloween in, 20, in 2007. I was supposed to perform Gimme More at the VMAs to help promote it. I didn't want to, but my team was pressuring me to get out there and show the world I was fine. The only problem with this plan, I was not fine. The uh, backstage at the VMAs that night, nothing was going right. There was a problem with my costume and with my hair extensions. I hadn't slept the night before. I was dizzy. It was less than a year since I've had my second baby in two years, but everyone was acting like my not having a six pack abs was uh, offensive. I couldn't believe I was going to have to go on stage feeling the way I felt. I ran into Justin backstage. It had been a while since I'd seen him. Everything was going great in his world. He was at the top of his game in every way, and he had a lot of swagger. I was having a panic attack. I hadn't rehearsed enough. I hated the way I looked. I knew it was going to be bad. I went out there and I did the best I could at the moment in time, which yes, granted, was far from my best at other times. I could see myself on video throughout the auditorium while I performed it. It was it was like looking at myself in a funhouse mirror. I'm not going to defend that performance or say it was good, but I will say that as performers, we all have bad nights, that they don't usually have consequences so extreme. You also don't usually have one of the worst days of your life in the same exact place and time that your ex has one of his best. Justin glided down the runway into his performance. He was flirting with girls in the audience, including one who turned around and arched her back, shaking her breast as he sang to her. Then he was sharing the stage with Nelly Furtado and Timbaland. So fun, so free, so light. Later that night, the comedian Sarah Silverman came out on stage to roast me. She said that, she said, that at the age of 25, I'd done everything worthwhile, worthwhile in my life I'd ever do. She called my two babies the most adorable mistakes you'll ever see. I didn't hear that until later, although at the time I was backstage sobbing hysterically. In the days and weeks that followed, the newspapers made fun of my body and performances. Dr. Phil called it a train wreck. So. Because she was obviously uh, seen partying with Diddy, and we all know about Diddy's uh, parties, obviously Britney is um, being dragged into this drama. Um, if you guys have not read this book, I highly suggest you do. This book is so incredibly eye-opening. It's her memoir. It came out actually around this time a year ago. And I will say this, uh, it's, it's one of the most powerful books I think you'll ever read. So make sure to go get your hands uh, on this on this uh, book. It's called The Woman and Me. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, best friend. So listen, I'm telling you this, and I've told you this from the very beginning. This is going to get very messy. A lot of celebrities are going to be brought into this, and it's just going to go worse and worse and worse for Hollywood. So one thing is for sure, I will be here documenting everything, spilling all the tea. So if you enjoyed this video and you are not yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. 
Um, and what do you guys think about this? You know, people are saying, why was she feeling so dizzy? What was going on? How come she didn't sleep the night before? She was at a ditty party. Of course, you guys understand people are coming up with their own conclusions and narratives. But obviously, you know, I'm just, you know, telling you what's been, what is being said. So what do we think? Let me know in the comments. I love you all so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah.